HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have a preview of this spring's Hopkinton Hillers boys tennis team. Congressman Joseph Kennedy visited Hopkinton Middle School. We'll tell you what Volley Against Violence is all about. And we have the Greyhound Friends Pet of the Month. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. Congressman Joseph Kennedy spoke to students at Hopkinton Middle School. He talked about his experience running the Boston Marathon and what inspired him to enter into public service as part of the Desire to Inspire program. More on this story coming up in the newscast. Fire departments from Ashland, Milford, Southboro, Westboro, Upton and Hopedale assisted Hopkinton with a second alarm fire at a home on Pine Tree Lane. The home was a total loss. Fortunately, no one was harmed. You can see more pictures courtesy of Douglas Dow at FullyInvolvedFirePhotos.com. The link is also available at our website, hcam.tv. The Easter Bunny visited the town common for the annual Easter egg hunt. Hopkinton Parks and Recreation and Hopkinton Drug assisted with the event. These photos are courtesy of the Hopkinton Card and Gift Facebook page. Hiller's standout student athletes Jen Manning and Michaela Pucci were honored at Women in Sports Day at Faneuil Hall. The program is hosted by the MIAA Women in Leadership Committee and honors women who have worked with distinction on behalf of girls sports in their communities. The nominations came from a school administrator. After a great playoff run that ended in the South Division III semifinals, the Hillers hockey team held their annual banquet, officially ending the great 2015-2016 season. This year's Jazz Ensemble was the first in Hopkinton's history to be named an honorable mention at the 40th annual Clark Terry Jazz Festival. The annual event took place at the University of New Hampshire. As the Boston Marathon airs, the Desire to Inspire program is once again taking place at Hopkinton Middle School. Every year, the program features various activities which allow students to think about what inspires them and set goals to accomplish prior to the marathon. Congressman Joseph Kennedy recently visited Hopkinton Middle School to talk about what inspired him to enter into public service as well as run the marathon two years ago. Morning, everybody. Yeah. Did you know it's Friday? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Who knew? You guys have an early release today, too? Yeah. I am here to tell you you're going to be here all day because I've got a really long speech for you. <laughs> As part of the Desire to Inspire program, Congressman Joseph Kennedy spoke to the students at Hopkinton Middle School. He talked about his experience running the Boston Marathon. You see people that you've never met who are feeling the exact same way that you are in that moment. Excited, anxious, competitive, yet pulling for each other. Men and women, young and old, dads and daughters, mothers and sons, runners from every corner of the country and the globe. Except for Meb, because he was probably already crossing the finish line. <laughs> Everyone there, no matter where they came from or how fast they were going to run, knew what that race meant for our state and for the city of Boston. And then, you hear that starting gun, and you're off in the most grueling, most memorable experience for a few hours in your life. You descend through Ashland and flatten out in Framingham and Natick, and step after step, mile after mile. People 
who you have never met are out there cheering for you, the guy to your left and the girl to your right. And after what feels like forever, you reach the halfway point in Wellesley. It is coincidentally the first large group of extraordinarily enthusiastic college students out there to greet you. A few miles after that, you're looking up towards the peak of Heartbreak Hill, which at that point is less of a hill and more like an asphalt version of Mount Everest. <laughs> and when you think there's absolutely no way you can make it, no way you can take another step, there's a runner by your side, a spectator on the sidewalk, who tells you that they know you can. It was at that point that I realized that this wasn't actually the individual sport it's often made out to be. Yes, the race is about you and the course. Did you put in the work or did you fake it? But when I was tapped out, when I couldn't take another step, someone I had never met was there to lift me up and push me on. For the last six miles of that race, it was those runners and those fans on the sidelines who carried me through, and thousands of others too. Congressman Kennedy then took questions from the audience. Did you feel that because you were a Kennedy that you had to be part of like, Congress or something <laughs> like that? Hope, great question. Um, one that I get all the time. Um, so, um, my, look, I grew up around politics. My dad was uh, a congressman too, um, served about 12 years in, in office. Um, and I've had other family members that I think some of you know um, had, have served in political office as well. Uh, when I was considering actually running for office, um, it wasn't something that I was sure I wanted to do. I was interested in it. I'd been brought up in it, but I didn't think I needed to necessarily do that at that point in my life. I just changed jobs. I was about to get engaged to my wife. There was other stuff going on. Um, I remember having a conversation with my dad. And many, many folks think that my family pushed me into that job. If anything, it was exactly the opposite. Um, my uh, dad and I had a, a conversation, and he made it um, very clear to me that unless this was something that I wanted to do, I really should not do it. We, we would like to present this class of 2022 sh shirt to you because you're larger than life to us. <laughs> Come on over there. Got it. Be on the lookout for the entire Hopkinton Middle School Assembly with Joseph Kennedy airing soon on HKM Ed. It is now time for the Greyhound Friends Pet of the Month. This month I was introduced to a very nice Greyhound named Hero. Hero is three. Um, Hero. Hero is three. He's uh, a really, really, really beautiful dog. He uh, gets along well with people. He would probably do best in a, in a one-dog household. Likes to go for walks. Probably best with older children. Um, he is um, calm, good-natured, and will, uh, you know, would do just do really, really well as uh, as a companion for somebody. Um, you know, maybe. Somebody who's uh, home a lot, likes to go for walks. It, he's, he's someone who, a dog who likes attention, but he doesn't have to have um, attention all the time, but definitely a great companion. And he's here. All right. At Greyhound Friends. Right now, you can visit Hero at Greyhound Friends. Hero is available for adoption. Coming up next on HCAM News, Hopkinton Coffee Break co-host Darlene Hayes will tell you what Volley Against Violence is all about. We caught up with the Hillers Boys tennis team as they get ready for the 2016 spring season. And Courtney will let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. 
HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. As the spring sports season nears, the Hillers boys tennis team is getting ready to go. HCAM News recently caught up with the captains as well as head coach Mike Miller to talk about the upcoming season. The Hopkinton boys tennis team is back at practice and after missing the tournament last year, a more experienced Hillers boys squad is looking to take the extra step this season. This year we're, we're looking forward to a productive year. We've, we haven't had that many of our players actually move on. We have a lot of returning players, especially up in the one, two, and three position. I think what's going to help us this year is we have a couple freshmen that have come in. They've made their varsity team. They're working hard. So what's definitely going to help us this year, um, as opposed to last year, I think, is our depth. Um, and certainly at the number one, two, and three spots and taking a look early on, you know, we're certainly very early on in the season. So there's still a lot to, to be told there as the story moves forward. But as of now, just taking the quick early looks, especially at our one, two, and three, they look like they're a lot stronger than they were last year. A lot more athletic, playing a lot more uh, with a lot more confidence. So, you know, look, looking forward to a great year going forward. I think we're looking really strong this year. We have a, a lot of depth and... Um we're, we have a lot of strong players that we brought in who are new, who will take spots in the lineup, no doubt. And we're going to hopefully make the tournament and end up doing really well. Um, we're definitely stronger than last year. We have two good incoming freshmen. We still don't really know where they're going to be in the lineup, but they'll definitely be starters. I think that w one of them will probably go into doubles, and that's where we had some trouble last year. So I'm expecting a good season. Captains Will Nado and Luke Whitehouse talked about their experience on the tennis courts. Uh, I started playing tennis about five years ago um, up in Vermont over the summer for a team and I played every summer and then my freshman year I tried it for the team and I ended up making varsity and since then I've been playing pretty continuously up until now. Uh, I started playing tennis at the beginning of eighth grade and then I've been on the team since my freshman year and I'm a junior currently. All right, um, how have you liked uh, playing here at Hopkinton? Oh, I love it. Uh, it's, the team's more like a family, and we always get along so well. Even though we might not all have been friends before the season, we come out being friends after, and it's just a really good bond and experience to have. I asked if the weather has played a factor during the cold and windy opening days of practice. Yeah, a lot of wind today, and we're used to that, being on the top of the hill here. So um, being unpredictable is what we're used to up here. You know, I always tell the kids, you know, there's... You, you can look at it two ways. Yeah, it's challenging, but at the same point, it's challenging for both players. So I guess we try to use it a little bit to our home court advantage. We know how crazy it can be up here. Um, so the rain, rain is obviously an issue. You know, we do what we can when we can't get out on the courts, so always trying to get better, whether it's, um, you know, doing some workouts in at the fitness center, getting some runs in, getting all that conditioning in when we can't get outside. So always taking every step that we can to get better, regardless of whether we're outside or inside. All right, uh, what are some of the drills you're working on uh, right now in practice? Well, believe it or not, uh, when it comes to drill and skill play, you would think that early on in the season that would be something that you work with. But 
um, having so few days with the rain, with the elements, and I know we open up, I believe, on the 6th, which is next Wednesday, it doesn't give us that much opportunity to get a lot of that skill and drill work in. That usually comes more as the season goes on, and the reason for that is we have to establish a ladder. The MIA, um, by rule, we have to establish a ladder, like our number one has to play number one, number two, and then our first doubles have to prove that they can beat our second doubles teams, whoever those lineups you know, work out. And there's certainly a lot of those lineups and a lot of potential lineups that you can go with. So it's a matter of playing those challenge matches, those first two, three, four, five practices going forward. And oftentimes you're still playing those challenge matches well into the season. So in terms of the, the drills and skill development, that will come. Um, but that typically comes a little bit later as opposed to sooner, just the way that it happens to work out. All right, how the practice has been? Obviously some crazy weather, of course, today with the wind. Yeah, the windscreens are getting worked on. They should, we're trying to get them up. But other than that, it's more just like on and off. The weather's always unpredictable, so rain or shine, we're always either in the gym or out here working hard. It's a little cold, but I think it'll warm up soon, which is good. And as soon as we get windscreens up, we'll be uh, safe from most of the winds. So that'll help a lot. Coach Miller mentioned the next couple of weeks is going to determine a lot as far as the lineup. Last year we had um, two of our players that are actually brothers, um, same age, same grade and they played number one and number two for us. And although it's very early and it's tough to predict, um, it looks like there's a good chance that they may play one and two again this year. Um, who plays the number one and who plays the number two? Um, that's yet to be determined. I mean, we've been playing some challenge matches today and I think it would be a little bit too early for me uh, to say who came out on top because that's always subject to change. Like you said, we could be playing some more challenge matches um, at the end of the week or at the beginning of next week. And whoever won today, you know, that's always subject to flip-flop. But uh, we have a couple scrimmages coming up we have scrimmages coming up on Wednesday and on Thursday so kind of looking forward to how they're gonna do with some kids that they might not necessarily know um, coming out here and obviously the kids you know play in the clubs and whatnot it's a different ball game a lot of times when you get out here with the elements at times it can be more of a mental game than it is a physical game so we're looking forward to find out what we have against uh, some of those other teams and some of those other opponents early in the year all right coach best of luck this year thank you appreciate it Hopefully the weather will continue to improve, but according to upcoming forecasts, it could be iffy for the start of the season. For all Hillers sports updates, stay tuned to our website, hcam.tv. Speaking of tennis, Darlene Hayes, who is a co-host on HCAM's Hopkinton Coffee Break, is helping a program called Volley Against Violence. The Dorchester-based program features many participants from young children to teens. The goal of the program is to help decrease youth violence by providing positive experiences. HCAM's Courtney Taylor was on the scene. Well, this is Volley Against Violence at Sportsman's Tennis and Enrichment Center in Dorchester. I actually am um, the sponsorship manager here. And there's about 200 kids that come in here to Dorchester from the Blue Hill Corridor. They're from Dorchester, Mattapan, Roxbury, and this is in partnership with the Boston City Police. They pick these kids up, they play tennis with them. Right now they're having circle time, and um, they'll have dinner. And it's a safe place where people care about them, and tennis is actually the healthy activity that engages them. But then the camaraderie that happens and the team building that happens, these, some of these kids have been coming here for years. Some are here tonight for the very first time. And um, Sportsman's is a very special place in the city. And this program is now being expanded in other cities in the, across the country. In a couple weeks, it'll launch in Atlanta. And then it'll be launching in um, Compton in, um, at the end of April. So it's something that Sportsman's is proud that they've started with the Boston City Police. And if people want to get involved in support, go to sportsmanstennis.org. We actually have a spaghetti dinner here on April 9th, and you can come and check it out, be part of it, and we'll be honoring the uh, Willie Goss, the uh, Superintendent Chief of the Boston City Police, who is a huge supporter of this. So thank you, and that's what this is all about. Okay, and um, how long has it been going on? Um, I believe Volley and Violence has been going on for close to 10 years. Uh, brainchild of Officer Frank over there that you've gotten some clips of, and Tony Wiley, the executive director here, and they have really engaged the community, engaged the city of Boston, and legislators, the, the mayor, have all been part of this. And it is, the idea that this is now launching in another city is huge. And uh, is there an age limit to this program? 
Uh, it's, it's, you know, you'll see some as young as toddlers here, and it'll go up to middle school, high school kids are still coming in here every week, and some have been coming here for years, and then they actually become some of the adult leaders here. So in the circle, they'll actually, that they're having now, there'll be a police officer, a parent, and a lot of times a, um, someone that might be volunteering from either Harvard University or Northeastern in the circle and just showing that they care and uh, listening to them. And tonight's lesson is actually, you know, listening to adults and listening to your parents and know they care. And uh, anything else you want to add? Just check out the website. Learn what, basically, this is God's work going on here in a very high-risk area. Um, go to sportsmanstennis.org and it's really, really a special place. And uh, if you want to uh, contribute in some way, how can you do that? Go to sportsmanstennis.org and there's a donate button there. You can contribute. You can come to the event on April 9th. See, see the um, Volley and Violence that Saturday night is a special night where we'll be uh, doing honor recognition. Um, there's also a women's leadership breakfast that we're doing with Candy O'Terry on April 26th. Or they can contact me, um, Darlene Hayes at yahoo.com, and um, I can get them involved. What we want to talk about real quick is the importance of listening to your teachers and parents. It's very important that you listen to the older people that talk to you. The people in your group that are older than you, they care. Some might even love you. It's very important that you listen to them. Not only because they're older than you, because they know more. They know more. So things we say to you, like don't hit the ball too hard because you hurt somebody, it's because we've seen that. When we tell you you have to go to school, it's because it's important. Not because we don't want you home, it's important that you go to school. You have to realize that you are the future of this entire world, and everything you do, it's going to be remembered. To find out more about the great program going on at the Sportsman's Club in Dorchester, you can reach out to Darlene Hayes by email at darlenehayes at yahoo.com. With the Boston Marathon quickly approaching and many school programs taking place, you can expect a whole lot of programming coming up on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney Taylor to tell you more with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, April 1st at 8 p.m., Connie, Darlene, and Patricia share April Fool's pranks and current Hopkinton events on Hopkinton Coffee Break. The kids put a stuffed raccoon into the fireplace, kind of coming out around the great thing. <laughs> And um, this was down in the lower level of the house, so something you know, I wouldn't have seen right away. So I went downstairs for something. It was probably in the evening of that night, and I was screaming like a banshee. On Monday, April 4th at 6.30 p.m., the services provided by Bay Path Elder Care are highlighted on a new senior view. There's a wide variety of things that I can help people understand, um, mm -hmm. even if they have a current need or even if they're doing future planning uh, for whatever needs they, they feel they might have. At 7 p.m., Women in World Jazz perform jazz songs inspired by different parts of the world on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Maybe someone like you They are all parts of me And I on Tuesday, April 5th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, April 6th at 8 p.m., Alexis Miller shares how the Hopkinton Education Foundation helps the schools on All About Hopkinton. We're focused more on advancing the innovation in the classroom, making sure that the kids really are excited to learn and want to learn and are passionate about learning throughout their lifetime. On Thursday, April 7th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Sunday, April 10th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from April 4th will air. And on HCAM Ed, students show off their talents in the HMS Talent Show, and the Hopkins School Spring Concert, HHS Band's Spring Concert, and the HHS Chorus and Orchestra Spring Concert will air. Check hcam.tv slash ed for program dates and times. We have so much programming here at HCAM, and you can find out more by visiting hcam.tv slash connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. 
or you can check out our daily news updates to keep up with the happenings around town. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can find a whole lot of information and the latest Hopkinton-related news, including how you can meet Bobby Gibb. Gibb was the first woman to ever complete the Boston Marathon. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching. Smile has gone.